option on the platform where they can do remote field reporting in areas in you know, sub-Saharan Africa where there isn't um, cell phone service. Right? And so we funded that if we're enabled for them to do that. So the, the approach that we take really is it is a very much the shared value approach, right? Where it is, um, you know, they are paying in at a discounted rate to support the greater good of the um, of the sector. And I mean, I, what we find is, you know, an enthusiastic um, embracing of this model um, and what we're able to provide. And the fact that, you know, if we look at the 1% equity that Mark set aside at founding, that was $15 million. Um, and we've done 100 million in grants, right? So the rest of that was all through the sale of our technology. So really it's been, um, it's really been tremendous what we've been able to do. Um, and so from, I mean, maybe this might have a different perspective, but um, perhaps it's our model, but um, you know, I think there's a, there's more embracing than resistance to, uh, you know, am I, am I paying for someone else's benefit? And so, Matt, real quickly, because we're, we're, we want to uh, get some questions here in, in a bit, but uh, uh, you must get pushback uh, because, you know, I think the perception from Whole Foods is maybe that there's, there's not the best value there. Uh, and so, I mean, do you ever hear back that, uh, you know, people think you shouldn't be so generous maybe because they're <coughs> paying for it somehow? Yeah, we, it's, um, I think we're, professional feedback takers <laughs> you know we have a lot of different stakeholders we, you know we, we from shareholders to all of our customers to all of our suppliers and all of our team members uh, you know 90,000 or something and, and growing uh, team members alone um, yet, yet to balance you know and, and our business model is to sell good food that meets certain quality standards <clears throat> and our core values clearly articulate what we're trying to do uh, in terms of uh, driving change in agriculture and providing healthy food. Um, and uh, so, you know, we're always trying to find that balance between what is an appropriate amount to charge for that, what should Whole Foods be making, how, you know, good food does cost more. I hate to tell everybody, but um, that's a real thing. And. Um, you know, so we don't get, I don't know that we get very much pushback on our philanthropic efforts um, because that's not the, it's not the primary focus of, um, that's really, you know, a major thing that's in most people's minds, I think. Um, and because so much of it is funded um, through customer support, voluntary customer support, or team member support, or suppliers supporting, some of it. Uh, we pay a lot of the administrative costs of our foundations ourselves, but that ends up being a fairly small number. So, but uh, you know, sure, you get we get pushed back on, um, on on the price that 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 the food costs, and there's a lot that goes into that, and it's a constant balance. Uh, but good food, good food costs more. Yeah. And, and Mike, some of your stakeholders must think you're off your rocker to give the kind of percentage of, of your profits. Uh, I mean, do you do you get do you have to handle? Do you ever get you know, some, some angry. Oh, we get we get them all the time. We get you know, we get customers calls up and say, "Well, I'm canceling my account because you donated to an abortion clinic." That happens kind of frequently, you know, because they look on the list of the benefit of the people that get donations, and you know, the, some family planning clinics are on there, and people have very strong feelings about that, and they call us up and they cancel their account. But you know, that we say, you know, they're legal, they got votes, they're supported by the community. Let's, that's the way democracy works, you know, and I'm sure Staples would never do that. <laughs> so, so, uh, you know, I think the, the general, the, I think we're all kind of in agreement here. I think the things we do in our companies that are focused on the well-being of the community are done in the context of the financial structures of our businesses. So 1% for us, that's half our margin. It's probably half your margin. And we're in a low margin business. So if we gave away 1% of our sales, we would be out of business because we don't we make two percent on a good year or maybe three percent on a good year. So, um, but uh, you know your business obviously can support you. Now, if you decided to do that just be out of the goodness of your heart and you had to raise your prices to your customers beyond the market rate, it wouldn't have worked. So you know you found a way to drive some community benefit through the financial structure that your unique business is capable of doing, and and that's what we're all trying to do. But we're all we all have. You know, we all have a business proposition that we have to make. And it's not, you know, the Whole Foods principle isn't 
a premium price for a social benefit. It's a premium price for a premium product. I mean, people are willing to pay, you know, hundreds of dollars for white handbags <laughs> to just carry stuff around because they, they, there's some premium value that they associate with that premium price. So that's a legitimate business model. That's crazy talk. That's a total legitimate business model. And so but we're, we all have to fall in line in order to maintain our businesses with what our customers demand of us. And within that, we try to find unique ways to leverage the things, the, the space that we have to amplify our community benefits in ways that don't detract from that value proposition, because that's what it comes down to for us. Yeah, thanks. I, I was on a call years ago with a potential client. I was pitching, and uh, he was asking me about how, how our giving back program works. And I said, oh, yeah, you're able to, to choose the, the nonprofit of your choice at the end of the year. We'll take 10% of your of the profits, and, and we'll, 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 we'll give that back to that organization. I said, unless it's the NRA, ha, ha, ha. And he said, I'm an R NRA member, ha, ha, ha. So, okay. <laughs> Put foot in mouth that time, and so I never used that uh, NRA thing that's that's ever. That's a 501c4. Right? That's a 501c4. Oh, thank you for that distinction. So, <laughs> so that doesn't fall on our list. Okay. Um, so you know, what we'd like to do right now, uh, we'd like to have you kind of formulate some questions, but you know, uh, we'd like to have you just kind of talk with the people at your table and maybe uh, even come up with a with a core question because. Uh, we have a hard stop uh, in about 15 minutes. Uh, you know, we can kind of stay afterwards and maybe chat uh, uh, afterwards. But uh, we'd like to maybe get a question from each uh, table. So if you'll just take a couple minutes, meet the people at your table, uh, maybe talk about a burning question, and uh, see if we can come up with something. <laughs> So uh, the question is, how much of this is going to be in the district of Kansas City? And I have a question. This organization is spent 50 million dollars for long time to spend money on the American Oscars. 500 million have been spent this year with the country. And because at the end of this year, that will be no kill. We know that. And that will be zero. We see the end of 2020. It's about 550,000. It's about 550,000. And that's just kind of a zero. We spent a lot of money that have zero happiness, zero benefits. The 2003 Million of Training Events. Have been uh, studied by Albert Einstein College of Medicine. It was a 21 year study on 13 different activities that have seen the benefits of a related to a so what I'm trying to say is, it's not how much money we spend, give it to the nonprofit. It's not how, how do we spend those money? Because I think it's a personal money. I think it's a personal money. I have a link now for the Gandhi mayor to my claim forum called Full Thing. We have lots of volunteers for Sudan. And we have a lot of audience, of course. And I feel like I benefit more senior than those 500 million people. So I don't think that I'm going to be able to do that. So I think the question is how do we, how do we spend the money? It's not really how to get how to push more money to the nonprofit. How much money is wasted on them? So I'm the one who really has to put the money to the nonprofit. Right. So, what benefit? When we raise all this money, 
how do we benefit the happiness of the human race? But that's piece of But he only took care of money. How do we raise more money? But that's the key. Really, do we have to the key is what he said. We are the bottom of the Just take a minute. And I know you're just getting a chance to chat. We want to make sure we just get one question from each table. Okay, and then you guys can keep that for me after at about 7.30. Okay? Because I know it's just getting juicy. Everybody's just getting to talk, right? Okay. All right. So every table has one question. One question. Okay. All right. So we'll get back together for now. Sorry to interrupt your conversation. So which table would like to start? One question for our panel. Yes. Okay. Okay, panel. You guys ready up there? They're all having their own thing. You guys all ready? All right, our first question. Okay, and please speak into the mic. We are recording. Yeah, we had a question about um, how to, I guess it, it's a blend of two questions, but uh, one of our group members had a question about how it fits into the small business model, um, and another had a question about when profits are down, um, how do you keep fitting it into your model? So it's, it's you know, a question of when the money isn't there, um, or when the money declines, how do you fit Know, how do you maintain, how do you fit that into your business model? So I'll say from, from the small business owner, um, so first of all, take the pledge, join pledge 1%, um, which is the initiative I was talking to you about earlier. We talk to startups that have, it's two boats, right? Still working in their living room, trying to figure out there's no profit. Um, but by setting aside, um, sort of leveraging your future success, making that bet that says, okay, there will be a time when we're profitable, um, and there will be something to give, let's do that. Um, and so that goes a really long way to having, um, down the road, to having that impact. But it also builds into that culture right from the beginning that says, we're going to figure out a way to do this. Um, and I think, you know, then as you grow, your programs are going to naturally grow with that. So that maybe you do have a little bit more funding and you can do something like a dollars for doers type of, um, you know, matching grant or, or something like that. Um, or you just, you, you know, you do your sort of quarterly offsite and you figure out a way to do the volunteering as part of that. Um, but if you set that intention from the beginning, you'll find the opportunities. And the Pledge 1% initiative is really to help actually help you support that and grow that. And so for any of you who are small or medium sized, um, I do have to run right after this, but um, we do have someone from Salesforce right there in the corner who can um, chat with you a little bit about it and then I can, I'm happy to follow up. Yeah, I would just add that from the um, when times get tough side of it, you know, again, if if the mission is who you are and it's built into your to your business, and uh, you know, I think that we're again a little bit different because it's it's not all about philanthropic give back with us. It's the you know we are our product. Our product is our mission. Um, we are where we are in the market because we've done that for years. So we're in a very competitive situation currently, but that we know who we are and we know why we've been successful. We have to do that better. There's no like, oh, let's go be somebody else. It's just, it's who we are. Uh, I don't know how else to say it other than, than that, so that it just becomes clear that we have to do that better. We have to figure out how to evolve it, but like we're not gonna go be some other supermarket chain. That's not, not even part, you know, it would never be a, a thought. I, I, I think it's, it's the kind of conventional business thinking. I mean, it makes no sense to the, if the community is your stakeholder. It makes no sense to the community to you know give away your seed corn. 
because you know you're not going to survive next year. So there have been years when we've given away, you know, 20 percent of our profits. There have been years when we've given away 200 percent of our profits that year because we felt like we could afford to do that without jeopardizing our future financial condition. Now we're in a difficult position right now because we've probably given away too much. So, so our bank does not want to give away anything right now until we get our net to debt worth ratio up to two and a half percent, which is. Where they were 2.5, which is where they it's our covenant with them for lines of credit. So, so you know, you have to think of it in terms of what the interests of your stakeholder are and make rational decisions based on the long term interests of the goals you're trying to trying to achieve. So, um, and those those decisions kind of flow in the, in the process of thinking strategically about how to move an enterprise forward. So, uh, but also, I think. It's got to be, you know, these kinds of issues have got to be on somebody's agenda. It's got to be in somebody's business, you know, their, their, their job description. So somebody has got to have on their to-do list today, or every time they go to a meeting, what have I accomplished in terms of the community interest? So somebody's got to have, it's got to be on the agenda, it's got to be part of the formal management process. It doesn't happen accidentally, it doesn't continue accidentally. It's got to be part of, embedded into the management structure and the management accountability structure of the business, otherwise it'll get lost, or it'll get diluted, or it'll be, the people will get confused. So it's you know it's not it's not that big of a it just doesn't happen by magic. It's, it's management. Right. The next question. Who has the next question? Can I do it? <laughs> Hi, Michael. You mentioned a, this is my first time here, so bear with me in the room. Some misunderstanding of your the, some of the terms here. You mentioned about we are the top. Uh, Reach, richest country in the world, but we are the, measured by me happiness, we are the bottom of the list. The question I have for you is, um, you rate, we, 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 you guys have talked about a lot of efficient way of give back, give back, but do you, do you, how do you measure how, who are you going to give and what kind of happiness or return we're going to get from the money you give? Because one example I have is, as a organ, a, we have spent $50 million lobbying Congress this year for Alzheimer's Association, I mean, I'm sorry, as told Alzheimer's research uh, for an R&D. $500 million will be spent, and we need more. But there will be no cure this year. And that means zero happiness to seniors, today's seniors. And will be no happiness for seniors for many, many years. So I can see the money we keep put, I'm not saying we should not do it, I'm just saying, the measurement, it doesn't seem to me, uh, for the return doesn't seem like it's, well, it's a lot of money spent if, for you to give it away and yeah. there's no happiness, zero happiness. So the question is, how do you, how do you judge about it? Okay, I think the, the answer to that is we, we don't, we rely, I mean, we're, we're interested in engaging a process by which the community through some general democratic process figures out what the most what the issues that are important to and what the organization to do the best work and we don't we don't evaluate the effectiveness of that frankly I mean if we if we if we each, if we took a vote right here there's 25,000 nonprofit organizations within 20 miles of where we're all sitting 20, 25,000 and they all have a constituency they all have an issue they all have an important uh, argument to make that their issue whether it's it could be domestic violence it could be environmental it could be animal rights I mean, it could be any of 25,000 different. Now, how do how do any of us decide which is the right one? That's the key. We That's don't. I mean, key. what what, we, what we're trying to do is we're trying to engage a process to set people. to set a process in place where the diversity of the community, as a multiplicity of stakeholders, has the opportunity to decide for itself, realizing that there's going to be winners and losers, but at least everyone is at has some opportunity to weigh in. You know, in a way that's important. So, and you know, and feel good about that rather than to focus focus on the things that are left behind. Because you know, I don't even know what those things are. You don't, and you don't. We always have different opinions on that. So, yeah, so we take a different tact on this. So, um, we do think that our technology is our greatest driver of impact by in, uh, empowering the nonprofits to be more efficient and effective in the work they do and be able to measure the impact we can see the greatest amount of change, right? So there's only so much that we can donate, there's only so much funding available, but if we empower those who are on the ground, who know the best approach, who have our, our 
trying out different models or they're expanding the model that they know are tried, true, and tested, um, that you know ultimately that we can have that greatest impact. So if we think about what we've done in our grant making in a year, but we look at what the value of the technology that we donate, which is about I think $215 million of donated technology last year, and we look at the nonprofits and they tell us, okay, so 86% of them are saying, look, we're more efficient and effective in the work that we do then we know that we're serving the community, right? So we're going back to that sort of our core business, which is our product, and we put it in the hands of the nonprofits, and then we say, do what you do best, and we will try and enable your success through what we do best, which is our technology. Great. Okay, so any one more question, one or two more? Just short questions, yep, great. All right. Um, this primarily is for the give something back, but we were very interested in how you were talking how you were talking about reusing reusing the resources, mm -hmm. and we were interested. I know you you mentioned this other thing that these things don't happen magically. So we're interested in sort of the details of the process. A who in your company thinks up these ideas? Who thinks? Who identifies what resources are available to use? And who, who comes up with ideas for what to use them? And then who decides which ideas to use? Because maybe not all ideas are good ideas. It's a, it's a good question. I mean, that's, and I, I think every, 